Hey everybody, it's Tim Derling and this is Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I want to thank everybody for watching and sharing. Rufus is taking his place on the couch here. So we're ready to go. Um, this one's another 8-track episode. Love doing these. And I kind of had to remind myself that I hadn't done an episode on this band in terms of 8-tracks. Um, my uh, collection of this group is what I would call uh, complete retail plus because uh, there are different levels of completeness when it comes to 8-tracks because you know you can get all the 8-tracks that were released to retail you can get all the 8-tracks that were released to retail and through the record club so there's usually a few RCOs on the end or you can be like me and have all of the retail 8-tracks plus some of the RCOs or one or two or something like that that's that's where this falls in but it's complete enough for me to do an episode uh, on it. Before I get started, I know I've, I've picked up a lot of new followers, which is fantastic, so I do want to remind people um, all this talk of 8-tracks and what does RCO stand for and all of that. Um, that's all chronicled in my first book, which is uh, three years old now, which is crazy. Unspooled, an adventure in 8-tracks. You can get this on Amazon. Uh, this tracks the 8-tracks eight-track evolution, I guess, from kind of the beginning, but mostly through the 1980s when they stopped being manufactured for retail sale, but Columbia House and RCA Music Service continued to manufacture certain titles almost completely through the 80s. So that's all in here, and uh, I'll have the link to my, uh, my Amazon page below. So, the group I'm talking about, one of the most successful, most beloved uh, biggest selling hard rock groups of all time, The Thunder from Down Under. Of course, I'm talking about ACDC. And I guess one extra thing I should mention when it comes to 8-tracks, I don't have any of the Australian ones. I'm strictly talking about uh, North American releases. So the Australian 8-tracks for ACDC, that's a different story. Just like collecting any format is a different story because you've got TNT, uh, you've got the different album covers, you've got the different track listings. Mine are simply North American. So... We'll get started with the first North American release, which, as we know, is actually a compilation. 1976, High Voltage. This is a U.S. version on Atco. It's a little chewed up at the bottom. As a matter of fact, when I bought this, I knew it came that way, and it had no end label on it. So I found a picture of that online and printed it off. And because it's in black and white, it doesn't look that bad. Kind of looks, uh, kind of looks legit. But yeah, this is the. The first thing that North America was exposed to, of course, it wasn't successful out of the gate. It took quite a few years to catch on. But I think all the ACDC albums are at least platinum for to a point. So, uh, Next up, an album that didn't come out in North America until 1981. But chronologically, it sits as the second North American release, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, with the weird hypnosis cover. This was owned by someone named Dean Cates, or Cates? Anyway, thanks, Dean. Uh, so this is a U.S. Atlantic version. Uh, next up, generally considered to be one of their very best albums, and so far the copy of the 8-track that's in the best shape, uh, Let There Be Rock, 1977. First one to include the, well, yeah, the classic ACDC logo. All the 8-tracks looking very similar so far. That is about to change uh, because I have actually the only Canadian 8-track uh, for ACDC. Another great album. This one's a bit overlooked because there were no really big songs from it. 1978's Power Age. So yeah, Canadian 8-tracks look way different than the U.S. 8-tracks. This was owned by somebody named Sing... Finger? I can't tell what it says, but uh, yeah, very different in, in look and design. It's also it's also one, you know, the, the variants of these, even the shells are different because this one's got, you know, the ones that come in like that and they've got like the, you, know, you can hang on to them, but that's the version of Power Age that I have. Next up is one that if I came across a copy that was in good shape, I would replace, but I think I got this with four or five other eight tracks is a lot, so... You know, right now it's holding a place in my collection. Uh, also, from 1978, their first live album, If You Want Blood, You Got It. This one has got a lot 
of cracks, uh, no bubbles, just cracks. And it's a little hard to read, but that is the copy that I have right now. Probably seen a lot of parties, I'm just guessing. Because I, I don't think it's sun damage, and uh, I don't think it's, you know, left in somebody's vehicle in the, in the window, because it, otherwise it would have bubbling. This just looks like it's been well played. A little better shape for this one, of course. The Breakthrough Album, Highway to Hell, 1979. It's a little bit easier to read here. Again, these U.S., uh, this one's on Atlantic, same company, really. Uh, the U.S. ones have a very similar look to them. Uh, now we get into the, the big one, of course, one of the biggest selling albums of all time to this date. Um, and uh, probably second only to Metallica's Black Album, or the heaviest, the, the, you know, one of the heaviest albums to, to sell this many copies. Back in Black, 1980, you know, this one's uh, not as easy to find as you might think. I think I see more copies of Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap than anything for ACDC tracks, but you don't see them a lot anyway, because this is a band that's still out there touring, and people still love them, so they're still collectible. Again, it's another U.S. copy. How bad are the song titles mixed up? Uh, I've seen worse, but, you know... This is such a well-known album in that order that it's weird to have, for example, you know, uh, let's see, what? Yeah, Shook Me All Night Long, Let Me Put My Love Into You, Have a Drink On Me, Back in Black. They split Back in Black. That seems, seems harsh, but anyway. Uh, 1981. For those about to rock, we salute you. I've seen different versions of this. There's a yellow copy, which is, to my mind, really ugly. This is sort of a brownish goldish copy u.s copy kind of like it a little worn and i think what we have missing here on the side label on the spine is the warner brothers sticker because i've got a few other eight tracks on the, the warner associated labels with the just the w and somebody must have tried to take it off for some reason i think that's what is going on here now that is it for the acdc eight tracks that were released uh, to retail, but that's not all of them, and I'm happy enough to have one of them anyway. 1983, really overlooked album, really solid album, Flick of the Switch. This is an RCA music service copy. You see that in the small print there. You can also get a Columbia House copy, which uh, has the blue square around the album cover. Uh, the RCA ones look very similar, or look very, very distinct. Um, and yeah, that's as far as my ACDC 8-track collection goes. There are two others, um, 1985's Fly on the Wall and 1986's sort of compilation slash soundtrack Who Made Who also exist on 8-track. When they do come up for sale, they are hundreds and hundreds of dollars because, like I said, ACDC is still a well-known band. Their songs still get airplay, and people collect ACDC that might not necessarily collect 8-tracks, so... Those are in demand by a lot of different collector groups. So there you go. Uh, anybody out there have any of the Australian ones? I'd love to see them. Um, or, you know, the two at the end that I just mentioned. Just basically, it's always a good time to talk ACDC. Uh, don't forget my Unspooled book if you want to know more about this sort of 8-track uh, phenomenon from the 1980s when, you know, most people would probably think they weren't making these things anymore and just making you know, vinyl cassettes and then moving into CDs. It's, a, it's kind of an, a unique period where there were, at one point, there were sort of four options if you were a music clipper back then. But anyway, uh, as you know, got a new book coming out. Um, looking forward to that. Keep an eye on Amazon. I wish I could take pre-orders. I cannot, but uh, soon enough. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. We'll see you later. Go crank up some ACDC, 8-track, or otherwise. We'll see you later.